Welcome to Christ Church of the Valley. We're so glad that you joined us online today. Hey, just a few things before we get started. First, we want to connect with you. Whether you're new or you've been here a long time, one of the easiest ways for you to connect is through our church app. Since, simply go to your respective app store, search for this phrase, CCV Philadelphia, and download our church app. And you can connect with us on the app in a variety of different ways. You can ask for a prayer request and know that someone on our team is praying for you about whatever you may be going through. Or you can give through our church app and even watch our church live every Sunday right in the app. So download that app and connect with us there. Second, we want others to know that we're sharing in this experience together every week. So whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, share that link with a friend and let them know that you are a part of a community that shares hope and peace with the rest of the world. So share that link with someone online today. And lastly, as a part of our experience every week, we participate in something called the Lord's Supper or communion. So in order to prepare for that, you need to a couple of different things. You'll need a piece of bread or a cracker to represent the body of Christ and some juice or a cup of water to represent the blood of Christ. So get those items ready now and you'll be ready when we share in communion at the end of our service today. So go get those items prepared and we'll get started here in just a few moments.
There's a scripture that we want to share with you today, and it comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 26 through 27. It reads, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying at a single hour to your life? And the answer to that question is no. And there's a God that is in your corner that is bigger than your worry and bigger than your anxiety, who has never lost a bottle. So let us see. to remember that amongst our trials, amongst our tribulations, our fears and anxieties, you have the battle in your hands. You never lost. Help us remember that today and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, welcome again. We're so glad that you decided to join us online today. A couple of things before we continue in our service. First, if you are new, we want to pay a special welcome to you. We want you to know that we are so glad that you're here and we'd love to connect with you. 
And you can do that through downloading our church app. Just go to your app store, search for CCV Philadelphia, download our church app. And on the app, you'll see a button that says, I'm new. Go ahead and tap on that button and fill out that information there and let us know that you're here so that we can connect with you and let you know some information about our church and how you can get more involved. The app is also a way that we update our church family about all sorts of activities that are going on. One of those things that's going on coming up soon is an event called CIY. That stands for Christ in Youth and it is an event that's designed for our students. And so normally our students would go away to a college campus for an experience put together and crafted just for them. And while they can't go to a college campus and experience that this summer, we're going to bring CIY right here at home for them. So visit our church website, ccvlive.com, and you'll get more information about CIY there. You're going to want to sign up your teenager so that they can participate in this awesome event. Now, there are other activities that we have going on throughout the summer. So you wanna pay close attention to what our student ministry is doing on our website or through our social channels on Facebook or Instagram so that you know exactly what is available for your teenager to participate in throughout this entire summer. And friends, all of these things happen at our church because we partner together in giving. It's a time in our service where we worship God with our finances so that we can continue to share his message of hope with the world around us. And what we would like you to do now is we're gonna have a variety of different ways you can give come up on the screen. You can give through our website, through the app, as I mentioned earlier, or you can give by mailing your gift into the church. You can even text to give here at CCV. We're gonna give you a few moments to do that now, and then Dan will be up for today's message. Hey, my name is Dan Reichel. I am the outreach pastor here at CCV. And wherever you're joining us from online today, we are so glad that you are here. Especially for somebody, this is maybe your first time watching our service. We are extra glad that you're here. Hope that you have a great experience and hope that you will join us each and every week. Today we're continuing with our teaching series that's been titled Game of Thrones. And if you've missed any of the previous two messages, want to encourage you to jump on to youtube.com slash CCV Philadelphia. You can go on there, watch the last two messages in this series. The series Game of Thrones is all about how there is a war going on inside each and every one of us every single day to see who will reign supreme. Is it God that's gonna be in that first position or is it something else in our lives that will sit on that throne? And we've been looking throughout the course of this series at the life of a guy by the name of Elijah. Elijah is honestly one of the most fascinating characters in the entire Bible. God raises up this prophet Elijah to bring God's people back to him. And last week, as Brian taught, was sort of like the final battle scene in a movie. It was like the ultimate crossroads where Elijah encounters 450 prophets of the, the false god Baal. They meet on Mount Carmel and it's just like this, this satisfying ending to this entire saga. And I will say that historically, most people, and myself included, it's like that is the story of Elijah. He battles these prophets of Baal. He defeats them. The fire comes down from heaven and God shows that he is the one true God. And that is a great place if you were writing a movie to just wrap things up there. What happens though, and it's interesting, is that's not where the story ends. That's not where the book of 1 Kings ends. It continues and keeps on going. And that's what I wanna do, is pick it up today in 1 Kings chapter 19. Look what it says. It tells us in verse one, Ahab told Jezebel, these are the antagonists in this narrative. Ahab tells Jezebel everything that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets of Baal with the sword and what Brian talked about last week. Jezebel in verse two 
sends a messenger to Elijah and says this to him. He says, you know what, Elijah? May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow, she threatens, I do not make your life like that of one of them. She is threatening to kill Elijah. And Elijah, at this point, after going through all of the, the stress and the difficulty and the challenge of battling these 450 prophets, it says Elijah was afraid and he ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, it says he left his servant there and while he, he himself, he went a day's journey into the desert just to get away and to be by himself. He came to a broom tree, it says. He sat down under it and he prayed that he might die. So overwhelmed. He said, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. And Elijah, in that moment, it says he lay down under the tree and he fell asleep. All at once, it says, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. And he looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then he laid down again a second time. The angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. And he got up and he ate and he drank. And strengthened by that food, it says, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and he spent the night. Think about all the things that you have gone through over the last week, over the last month, the challenges that you have faced over the last three months that we've been going through this pandemic. For you, maybe the struggle that you face has been years in the making. And at some point, have you found yourself where you are feeling the same way maybe that Elijah felt? Where you were like, you know what? I just, I give up. I don't know what else to do. I feel so spent, so overwhelmed. God, I don't know how to get over this. Chuck Swindoll is a pastor. He's an author of over 70 books. He was the president of Dallas Theological Seminary. He's in his 80s now. And Chuck Swindoll tells a story about being weary. He says, I vividly remember several years ago being caught in the backwash of too many commitments in too few days. He said, it wasn't long before I was snapping at my wife and our kids. I was just scarfing down food at mealtimes, feeling irritated at the unexpected interruptions that he was feeling throughout the day. Before long, he says, things around our house started reflecting the pattern of my hurry up lifestyle and it was becoming unbearable. And Chuck Swindoll says he remembers one night after dinner, his younger daughter, Colleen, she came and she was like, she wanted to tell him something important. She was like, Daddy, I want to tell you something, but I want to tell you really, 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 really fast. And he was like, he could tell that she was getting frustrated. And so he answered her in a very deliberate manner. He said, honey, stop, slow down for one second. You don't have to, to tell me real fast what you want to tell me. You can say it slowly. And, and Swindoll's daughter said something to him that resonated with me, it resonated with him, and maybe it will resonate with you. She said, okay, daddy, that's fine, but then I need you to listen slowly. Like right now, on a scale from, let's say, one to ten, how, how stressed, how burdened, how overwhelmed do you feel, especially now in whatever circumstance you're dealing with? Are you, are you at like a, a four, a five? Are you at like a nine? Or a 10, are you wondering, can this scale go above 10 because you feel like maybe you're at like a 17? Especially now, when we are feeling stressed and we're overwhelmed, there are, there are negative effects to that, aren't there? There are, are, honestly, there are physical dangers to living in a state of constant stress. And you maybe have some of these. You, you might have back aches and neck aches and headaches and insomnia, ulcers, high blood pressure. There's a physical toll that it takes on us when we are constantly feeling stressed and overwhelmed. There's the emotional dangers that we face, that you feel maybe completely trapped 
that you're burnt out and burnout can lead to depression and depression can have all these long-term effects. As you may know, spiritually, it is so dangerous for us to always be stressed and overwhelmed. And what happens is, is that we feel like, like oftentimes maybe God is powerless. That you feel like, you know what, I, I can't get out of this jam and God would help me, but maybe he's, he's powerless because if he could help me, he would have done it already. And, and he, for whatever reason, God is not coming through for you. That might be how you feel. The prophet Elijah strikes me as somebody who was overwhelmed in this moment and he finds himself to the point where he's like, you know what, I don't know where else to go or what else to do. He gets done with his confrontation and it says in verse three, again, that Elijah was afraid and he ran for his life. He went into the desert, he came to the tree, he sat down under it and he prayed, Lord, take my life, I am no better than my ancestors. He felt so hopeless that he was like looking toward the end of his life. And there are, there are definitely negative ways to do that. But there's also, I would say, maybe a healthy way to think about your mortality, to think about how short life is, to think about, you know what? I, I don't have unlimited time here on this earth, so I need to have a focus on my priorities being straight. In 2005, Steve Jobs gave the the commencement speech to graduating seniors at Stanford University. And he said this, this was his secret to success. He said, remembering that, not to be morbid, but remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death leaving only what is truly important. Something happens, we are promised, when we stare into the face of our own mortality. Our priorities have the chance, maybe for the first time in a long time, to get aligned. Our relationships can be prioritized. The things that we don't feel like are in the right place can be put into perspective. And this is what is happening there in 1 Kings chapter 19. This is a turning point in the life of the prophet Elijah. And there are a couple changes that he makes that honestly, if we were to follow this, I don't, I don't believe in that moment Elijah was thinking, yeah, you know, 3,000 years from now, I hope that there are people in the United States or wherever you're watching that will follow this formula. But it ends up being something that we can look to and say, yes, if we very simply follow these similar things that Elijah did in his moment of despair, we could also be free from that overwhelming weight that we feel like we're carrying around. The first one, gosh, very simply, is that he had a change of pace. In verse five, it said he was, he was on the run. He knew his life was in danger. And it says he just lay down under the tree and he fell asleep. Elijah was trying to save a country. He was afraid for his life. He was constantly on the run. He was bouncing all these things at once. He was like a lot of us, just running full throttle. And what happens when we experience stress without relief? We just, we eventually, we're gonna break. And so he changes his pace. He lays down under the tree and it says that he took a nap. This might be maybe the simplest, the most practical, and maybe the most important thing that you hear this entire week, okay? I, I want to give you permission to follow the example of Elijah, and at some point this week, not to the detriment of your job but necessarily, but to just take a nap, like, even today, if you're watching on Sunday, today, this morning, take a nap this afternoon. Take some time to change the normal routine that you're in, the pace that you're, you're running at. And even if it's for a short time, take a nap. You can say to whoever's in your house, I gave you permission to do that. The second was, Elijah changed his responsibility. 
And you, maybe you're like Elijah in this, you're like me, you're like most people I know. We feel like we have to be the ones to solve everything, do everything, make sure everything works. It tells us in verse 5 of 1 Kings 19 that at, at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. That there were so many things that Elijah was carrying around, so many responsibilities he had, and for the first time in a long time, somebody else not named Elijah was thinking about, caring about, and taking care of Elijah. God sent this angel. I love the way the Apostle Paul says it in the New Testament, Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. He tells us to carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. And for most people, we, we hear that verse, Galatians 6, 2, and we think, okay, that is our call to carry someone else's burden, to be the carrier. But you know what it also means? It also means that we need to learn better to allow people to carry our burdens for us, to you allow somebody else to carry, at times, your burdens burdens for you. The third thing that Elijah does very simply that we see in 1 Kings 19 is that he changed his focus. In verse 6, it says he looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals, jar of water. He ate and drank and he lay down. And there are things that we constantly are worried about and stressed about and thinking about and we, we oftentimes neglect our own personal health, our own personal well-being in 2020. We know there are so many things that are uncertain and that we don't know how to fix or how to solve. And we see in the life of Elijah this opportunity to stop for just a moment and to think about the physical. Let me ask you this question. When's the last time you took a full day off? It is very biblical to observe one day every single week, every seven day cycle where you detach, where you disconnect, where you stop focusing on the responsibilities of your job and all the things that you are, are feeling like you are burdened with. And once every week, having a day set aside to rest and to reflect on God. That's called a Sabbath. In Exodus chapter 20, what does it say? It tells us to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. And so for us, maybe, maybe the principles are that, you know, we need to at least once a day detach, just focus a little bit, whether you start your day with prayer or something like that. Every single week, we find one day where we take off and we withdraw. And then honestly, even if you can't afford it, just find some way throughout the course of the year, maybe this, this summer, for you to escape and be on, even if it's a staycation for you, just detach for some extended period of time to rest and to reflect and to recharge. The whole reason why Elijah went out into the desert was for all of these reasons. He didn't know how to solve the problem he was facing. And so God intervened, stepped into that moment and showed him how important it was to do these things. The great spiritual writer Oswald Chambers said this. He said, the great enemy of the life of faith in God is the good which is not good enough. We think, okay, if I keep running at the pace I'm at, that will keep me going and that is good. But Oswald Chambers reminds us, he says, the good is always the enemy of the best. We see the example of Elijah. We hear the teachings of the Old Testament that tell us that we need to observe a Sabbath at least once a week and disconnect. And I love the words of Jesus who tells us in Matthew chapter 11 to very simply, Jesus says, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Dallas Willard said this. He said, you know, muddy water, it becomes clear only if you let it be still for a while. And in your life, in this moment, in this season that we're in, I know for most people that are, I'm connected to, things feel muddy. 
If you think about like a river or a lake or a pond or a stream, that when things are all over the place and you're not sure and, and the, the, the dirt and the mud is getting stirred up, things are not clear. But when you stop, when you slow down, when you focus, and honestly, if you allow Jesus to be the one, as he says in Matthew 11, to give you rest, he's offering that to you, it's only in those moments when life can become clear. And so may we look at the life of Elijah. We know just like him, we're gonna have times when we have to be on our A game, when we are faced with a monumental challenge, when we have to pour ourselves out almost to the point of exhaustion. But on the back end of that, and maybe you're feeling that right now, we are going to be weary, burnt out, and burdened. And I pray that we hear the words of Jesus that we would come to him, those of us, all of us, who are weary and burdened, that we would come to God through Jesus and find what we're looking for. Let's pray. God, we are always going to be faced with times in our lives when we are burnt out, we're exhausted, we don't know where to turn. We've spent ourselves and our energy, God, and, and we just keep going. We push even more because we think that's gonna be the solution to our problems, to try harder, to keep climbing the mountain. I pray, God, in the same way that Elijah found himself at his lowest points, that we would hear you whispering to us in those moments to stop and to rest. God, I pray that we look for those opportunities this week, that you provide them to us in the most clear ways possible, and that we would take advantage of the times that we have to pause and to reflect and to spend time with you. God, thanks for your patience and your grace that you show us always. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love that passage that Dan shared in his message today at the end where he quoted Jesus, where Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. When we are stressed or full of anxiety, this is certainly one of those passages that speaks to us directly from Jesus. And friends, he is able to do that because he loves us and he sacrificed himself for us. He knows us and he knows exactly what to provide and when so that he can bring us to a place of peace and rest in our everyday lives. We're gonna celebrate that sacrifice that Jesus made in communion right after this song. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of a breath, the planets form. If the stars remain to worship so high, I can see your heart in everything you've made. Every burning star will signify your grace. If creation sings your praises so loud, oh, so God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, you syllable.
Let's remember together as we share the body of Christ. And the blood of Christ. God, I'm so grateful. We are all grateful for the sacrifice that you made for each of us. For the fact that you do truly know us. And you want to bring rest to our souls, to bring us to a place of peace. And God, may we know that today as we go about our week, to know that we are forgiven and that you bring rest to each of us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I'm so glad that you decided to join us today. And just so that you know, don't forget, we have great content available for your children and for your teenagers on our website. So visit ccvlive.com and stay up to date on the latest things that are happening in our church family. We're hoping that we get to meet together again soon and we'll see you next Sunday. Have a great week.